there's two more Lady Vols candidates that have been named, and this by The Athletic, uh, by Chantel Jennings, who I worked with for a short uh, time, and I know she's covered a lot of uh, different sports, including college football, so I don't know how much she's covered women's basketball. Just because she's a lady doesn't mean she's covered exclusive women's basketball. So she's covered a lot of different sports. But two names that came out with the Lady Vols and their coaching surge just don't do anything for me. And maybe I'm wrong. It's uh, Yolette McPhee McCune from Ole Miss and Oklahoma head coach Jenny Branzik. And I hope I'm pronouncing both of their names correctly. I know that I'm looking at their resumes correctly, Caleb. And I don't see one that beckons a call to become the Lady Vols next head coach replacing Kelly Harper. Well, they have they're at different levels of success, but relative to what they inherited and what they turned around, they've both been incredibly impressive. Um, uh, Jenny Bar- Brinks, I think that's how you pronounce her name, right? Brinzik. Um, she has won back to back Big 12 titles at Oklahoma. She has gone 74 and 26 in three years there. She's going to be joining the SEC soon enough as it is. And before that, she was at Drake and she had three straight conference titles there and was on a roll. Now the issue, and again, I don't like to make patterns out of things that aren't there. And I think that's a big common mistake we do in sports, isn't it, Dave? Is to make, just not subconsciously make, make a pattern that's not necessarily there. Yes. However. Especially with, especially with recency. Right, exactly. The concern with her is that She's never been out of the first weekend of the NCAA tournament ever. And you have to wonder, she's never been out of the first weekend of the NCAA tournament. Why has she never been out of the first weekend of the NCAA tournament? So that's one major question mark. However, at the same, but however, she has rebuilt programs and done a very good job during the season. You let McPhee McQueen, honestly, her resume is not as good, but what she's actually done is more impressive. I mean, Ole Miss was a, bad women's basketball program for a while and okay, what let me ask you this you had their I, I wrote about it i know their career records so this is kind of rhetorical uh but did they either have enough just experience or the winning percentage brought to you by boundless moving from their two-hour minimum to turnkey operations they've got you covered they absolutely do boundless moving in east tennessee moved me boundless moving also in north carolina in the charlotte area Caleb, I just don't see enough games won by any of these candidates to get excited about or games coached. I mean, this is the Lady Vol still. I know these aren't the best of times to be a Lady Vol, but it's not as if they were the football program that had completely fallen off the map. Well, the thing with sports you have to remember, Dave, is that I think I think people get so caught up in the home run hire. There are maybe, let's just take it to football for a second. You think there have been three home run hires in the history of college football since you've been covering, right? Three. Yeah, you. and I was and I was two for three, which I wasn't perfect, but I would have bet a mortgage payment or more on it. Yeah, exactly. And so I thought there was one more among the ones you said. I thought Jim Harbaugh was a home run hire. I don't know if that was a home run the way I thought. I mean, he won a national title, but like I, I expected a Saban dynasty that Harbaugh would do, and he never, he didn't usher that in. So I, I'm honestly, it's it's hard to get it right, and I think sometimes we overrate the hype behind a coach before they took over at where they are now. I mean, Dabo Sweeney came from nothing. He was an assistant under Tommy Bowden, who was fired and then won two national titles. to say we Danny White to a certain degree I mean we're talking about the best hire in the business and and so I I do think what Yolette McPhee McQueen has done is actually really incredible I mean she's again she she took Jacksonville to the NCAA tournament in 2015-16 then she coached in the Bahamas for a couple of years by the way and with basketball going international you don't think international connections can help in recruiting and in the Bahamas? I mean, it seems like Europe, maybe. I mean, I'm just saying it could help in recruiting in the Bahamas, too. And she probably did go a little more international doing it. And look, I'm sorry. I'm having a hard time seeing why she wouldn't be a great hire compared to some of the other names we're talking about. I mean, I talked about Lindsay Gottlieb yesterday, and I'm pretty high on her. 
Giant is high on Jeff Walls. In a short, she has a well, lesser. Gottlieb and Walls are in a whole different realm than the two ladies mentioned by the athletic. If the, if they end up with one of those, they should have just stayed with Kelly Harper. Uh, I disagree. What Yola, what Yolette Miffy McQueen has done and what uh, JD Berensic has done is much more impressive than Kelly Harper. Kelly Harper had five NCAA tournament appearances in 15 years and was hired because she made one Sweet 16 one time. That's how she was hired. I agree. And, How many Sweet 16 do these ladies have? Well, that's the problem with uh, Jenny Baransics. She has none. And that's why I said her NCAA tournament truck record is a question. But um, Yolette Miffy McQueen already has one. And she's got one early in her career than Kelly Harper got because she got it in one, two, three, four. Her fifth year at Ole Miss, she got it. She took over a program, Dave, that had had five straight losing seasons. She had two losing seasons her first two years, and she's been better ever since. 15 and 12, 23 and 9, 25 and 9, 24 and 9. Three straight NCAA tournaments, a Sweet 16 two years ago. That's a much better – I mean, she's done – in her last three years at Ole Miss basically matched Kelly Harper's – the, the the three best years you could find from Kelly Harper before Kelly Harper was hired at Tennessee. I don't think it's a major upgrade. Either of those. I, I think if I'm you want to sorry, talk about I Gottlieb or, or somebody that has made it to a, a, a final four, I think that's a major upgrade. I just think that Tennessee should be able to call a different level of candidate. Well, I think, and this is why I think Danny White's a little bit different than most hires. I don't think Danny White just looks at their track record on paper. I think Danny White can actually project what they might be able to do long-term. I mean, Danny White makes hires. Danny White's the Danny White's the broker, Dave, that invests in the stock because he can predict how good it's going to go up in the next 10 years. He's not the broker that invests in the big stocks. You see what I mean? And that, that doesn't mean it's a bad thing, but like he's the guy that's going to invest in Amazon in 1995. And that would so, have been a good investment. Exactly. You let McPhee McQueen could be Amazon of 1995. Jimmy, I want to ask you of the candidates you've read about or know about or talk to people within the program about who who you like and maybe a thumbnail sketch. I want to remind everybody that Jimmy's appearance each and every Wednesday is brought to you by our good friend, Ray Varner, Ford and Clinton. Ford Mustang 5.0 GT, 33540, 2021 GMC, Sierra 1500 Denali 4x4, 46980, 2022 Ford Expedition, King Ranch 4x4, 67550, Ray Varner Ford, your East Tennessee Ford dealership. All right, Jimmy, who do you like as far as a potential replacement for Kelly Harper? I think that, uh, I think his name's Jeff Lutz at Louisville. I think he's a good basketball coach. I think he's somebody that uh, I was told that a few years back he really wanted the Tennessee job. Does he still really want it? I don't know. But he he knows the history of the program. Uh, Lindsey Gottlieb at Southern Cal. Now, that's going to be hard to get her away. I would mm -hmm. really like to get her if she can bring Juju Watkins in that recruiting class with her. If she can do that, you're going to be great right away. Uh, and she's had success in California at three different schools, including Santa Barbara, Cal, and at USC. She's done a great job at USC. I think it's their first Final Four since 84 for them. Uh, those are the two at the top of my list. I like Wes Moore a lot a few years ago. He's 66. Not sure if I want to go that route with him. Uh, maybe that ship has passed uh, for him. Uh, the coach at Ole Miss, I think, has done a really nice job. Um, so I would I would look at um, I would look at her. Uh, that would – and I, I'm hesitating in keeping um, – Wes Moore on my list just because of his age. But if I could get six good years out of him, wouldn't that be worth it? Yeah, absolutely. Uh, with with Gottlieb, can I throw this out there for either of you guys? And Jimmy, maybe you've talked to somebody that knows. Why would, why would she come to Tennessee? And I guess what I'm kicking around at, is there still something innately about being Tennessee and the way they support the program and all that they have that you could pull somebody that seems poised for this great level of success, but your Tennessee is, do you think there's still some of that at play? I think there's, it's not what it used to be, but there's still some of that at play, the history of the program. So why would she come uh, more money? Why would she come? And, and look, I'm not saying, I don't know what her salary is. The Southern Cal, uh, they, they're a private school. They don't necessarily have to divulge that. Maybe somebody knows. I don't know what it is. 
maybe Tennessee can, if not double her salary, uh, go time and a half. If she's making a million, pay her a million and a half, whatever. Um, the other part of that to me is that I don't know what kind of NIL money they have at Southern Cal. Mm -hmm. They may have a lot more than the Booster Club, but maybe at Tennessee, the Booster Club would raise enough money to where, hey, this is how much NIL money we have compared to what you got at Southern Cal. Maybe it's a lot more. Maybe that would be another uh, selling point from Tennessee's perspective. Caleb, go go where you want to go, but I think the one thing we can all agree on is we need to work on that Boost Her Club name. That's just not the best name that's out there. Caleb, take over. Jimmy, um, I'm going to move on to another topic real quick that uh, I think it would be really good with what we're talking about here. But just real quick, um, yeah, I'm I'm I, Lindsey Gottlieb's my top choice. Dave brought, a, brought her up this morning, and he actually brought her up to say why Tennessee, she may not be a great hire, but I've kind of talked myself into Yolette McPhee, McPhee McQueen, the Ole Miss coach. Um, what she's done at Ole Miss the last three years is – that's incredible, honestly. And we know Danny White. I, I told Dave before you came on, I want to know what your thoughts on this. Danny White's not a guy who invests in – if he were a stockbroker, he wouldn't invest in Amazon after – it became a billion dollar company. He would invest in Amazon in 1995 before the split happened. And I'm like, yeah, that Nick McQueen could be Amazon before it, when it's just selling books right now. And it, it could that, because it seems like she's not as high profile, but she's done a heck of a job at Ole Miss. I want to know your thoughts on that. Yeah. Yeah. And I, I think that's a fair point. Now, Buffalo, he did that because he had to. So he hires, he hired two really good coaches there. He hired Nate Oates for basketball and Lance Leopold is now at Kansas. And he's done a very good job at Kansas. Those were two outstanding hires. His football hire at Tennessee was not a huge splash in Josh Heupel. Uh, he was an up and comer. So I think that's that's kind of what he's looking at. He's looking at somebody that is on the rise that hasn't reached the peak yet, but it, it, you don't have to pay a gazillion dollars to get him like Kim Mulkey. He's looking for somebody that's on the rise and up and come a really good coach who can take this program and transform it back to what it used to be. So I would he shoot for the stars? Uh, he might. Uh, but I think uh, and, and Gottlieb would be one of those, in my opinion, Me too. Uh, whether he can get it or not. I don't know. But I, to y'all's point, I, I do think that what he's done is he has hired coaches that were on the rise, that were up and comers that hadn't reached the pinnacle of their career. So I think what. Well, what I want to lay out there, so we would consider Gottlieb a star. Who else have we discussed would consider would consider a star? I mean, Kara Lawson because of name recognition, but she doesn't have a have star resume. Who else would be a star that we've discussed, Jimmy? That tends I'd, to I'd put I'd put Lutz in that category. I think he's been to hadn't he been to two Final Fours? Walls, you mean Jeff Walls? I think his Walls. name is Walls. Yes. I'm sorry. And, at Walls at Louisville. Yeah. I, I'm sorry. Yeah, I said the wrong name. Sorry. Uh, yeah. yeah. So that's 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 he's been to two of them. Uh, I think they're uh, so that would be one. Of, look, the others. I mean, you know, I don't think you're getting Don Staley. You're not going to go out and get uh, Vandermeer out at Stanford. So, I mean, some of the stars are, and you're not getting Mulkey. Some of the star coaches out there, Vic Schaefer, uh, are settled or they're they're up in age to the point where you're not going to risk bringing them in. I don't think. 